Okay, guys, so I want to kind of do a little walkthrough of what we should be doing for the moment on the uh, first practice round. So I went ahead and logged in a Capsim here, and this is your first starting page, and I'm I'm going to just make this really simple just because I know that uh, at least one of us uh, has never done uh, the uh, simulation before. So this is just a quick how do we do this sort of thing? How does it work? So let's scrolling down here. As everybody is joined up now, which is awesome. So then I'm going to go ahead in here, continue to decisions, practice round one, gets us to where we want to go. And the web version is what I'm going to use. You can use this if you prefer, but I'm going to go with the web version. And then Cap Sims, Capstone stuff here loads up. And we have decisions that have to be made R&D, marketing, production, human resources, and finance. So if I click on R&D, this is Bruce's area. And then we see here are the products that we have from before. And it looks like uh, they've been updated. So one of the thing so one of the things that we need to really look at is what are making changes like this create in you know their net results. So you see here you have red labeling where you see, uh, Agape has moved down, and Adam has moved over, and Abel has moved over. Acre is unchanged, so it's in the same spot. Naft is unchanged, so it's in the same spot. Material costs, old material, new materials reflected here. And you see the net change in, in cost has gone here. Don't also, don't forget that when you make a change, you change the age, the perceived age, by consumers. It is cut in half. So if we want to look at uh, reports, these links are the HTML version of the Capstone Courier. If you click on the, cap, uh, blah, click on the Capstone Courier, you'll get a PDF version of the whole thing. But for now, we wanted to talk, We when we had our meeting, we talked about existing a lot in the low-end segment. Uh, so while we may want to have some parts in other areas, we really wanted to look at low-end. So. Uh, this pulls up your short uh, version of the low end segment. You see right here low end customer buying criteria and the perceptual map for the low end segment of the Capstone Courier. So we see the perceptual map of the low end segment is somewhat different from here. As you can see, this one here, the, the dotted line is actually outside the 20. And here it's just barely inside. You can see this one, it's right here at the arc of the 18 corner here. This one is past it a little bit in here. So you can see that this perceptual map in the green area is actually the progression map because over time, as things go on, the trend is going to be moving from top left corner to bottom right corner over time. So you can see that the small changes over time are apparent because this capstone core here was for this previous round and the projected map at the end of the year is moving that tiny step forward. Now if we're going to look at that rate and we're going to anticipate next rounds, if we look at the general speed of that, that may be what the simulation is pacing things at, that small increment. So you can see that it was a very, very small shift. Uh, let's not necessarily count on that, but I can show you that it is actually uh, apparent in other areas if you want to pull up a different one. We can look at the high-end segment right here and you can see that there's 14 to 10 in here is the mid-range, the bottom of the circle, 15 at the top, down to 10, and then over here you can see that the mid-range is actually, well, this is for the high-end. So the high end down here, now you see that it's the bottom end of the circle for high end is actually at about 9, not 10. So it has moved down again, 
and then everything is trending down into the right. So now the rightward movement, we you could see previously the left side of the circle was between four and six at about five here. So let's see what the high end circle is exactly on the six. So we're going about a half step to the right and down from the last round to this round. And if we can keep that in mind for future rounds, that would allow us to anticipate how to stay in the dark circle rather than the dotted circle. And the difference, again, between the dark circle and the dotted circle is the dotted circle is the entire market, but the dark circle is the critical market. So the people inside the critical market are going to have an easier time selling product and they're going to be preferred first by the simulation over people who are in the perimeter into the dotted area inside that same range. So now if we look down here, you're going to see obviously that uh, one that was changed, which is Abel, had a perceived age of 3.7 years and now that he has been reduced, he's down to 2.2 uh, which initially went down to 1.9 and then went up to 2.2. So the age changes have uh, do play a role. And I'll show you that here. You can see that the ideal age for a low-end consumer buying criteria is seven years. And you'll see that the high-end customer criteria is zero year years. So obviously that makes sense in terms of the people who are buying higher end products are also looking for the trendiest products, meaning the youngest, most recent, most cutting edge products. And the people who are in the low end segment are looking for something that is more of a tried and true longer age product. Similarly, in the traditional customer buying criteria, which we call your mid-range, your ideal age is two years. So, for instance, here we see Abel is solidly in the two-year market right now. So, also, let's look at Abel where it was before in the traditional market. It had, let's see, a... 13% market share of the traditional segment market and a 17% market share of the low end market. And unsurprisingly, Abel had no market share of the high end market because it's an older product. So the um, oh, actually did I read that incorrectly? Yes, I did. I thought I thought that was Abel. It's Acre. Okay, so. Abel was sitting in the, the traditional range right there at 13%. So Abel has a primary segment of nine, uh, primary segment of traditional, and it sold almost a thousand units. It did not sell out completely, but it also had underutilized plant last year. So what we would want to try and do is crank this up a little bit, utilize more of the plant, and uh, see if we can't get more of that selling. Now we also saw that last year it sold at a price of $28 and so the contribution margin was very high. It was 29% which makes it higher, well makes it right in the middle because you had a 30%, a 33 and then the 29 here so it was still more of a contribution margin than the 23 and 27. So right now this is our third best performing product at $28. But the material cost was 11.59. So now with our material cost in dollars being a bit higher for Able, uh 11.61, we should still be able to stay very close to the $28 price, but we may need to increase it by the amount that we increased material cost at least which means you have a difference of about 30 cents there so we can anticipate that we may need to go up to 28.50 or so on the total price and that's not including any other changes that we may make toward uh, other things in the plant now if we utilize more of the plant you may have lower production prices based on volume but then you also may have overtime. You can see there's zero overtime pay in this scenario. And 
that also plays a role in the contribution margin because it increases labor costs. So if we went up to say 99%, we would avoid shift to overtime, but we would have uh, that sweet spot of utilizing plant uh, quite high without going too much over into overtime and labor costs that would be expensive. So then let's move on to decisions in marketing and how those are made. Okay, so let's talk about marketing. So in the previous one that we mentioned that Abel had made some changes uh, so that now we may want to move the price up to cover for the increased materials cost. So <coughs> You can see that the previous price for Abel was $28. And at $28, we know that last time, let um, me find Abel in here. Last time it's in the traditional market. And Abel last time sold 961 uh, units in the traditional segment market. And they sold them at a list price of $28 and a $1,000 promo budget and a $1,000 sales budget. So at the amount, there was 55% customer awareness and 54% customer accessibility. So let's say that we want to bump the price up a little bit. We may want to also consider increasing customer awareness and customer accessibility since Able is our third best selling product. So at least for products uh, one, two, and three on the best selling, we may want to consider trying to shoot for higher customer awareness and customer accessibility. Uh, our products three, four, and f uh, four, five, and six, maybe we can be satisfied with less. But the um, this product, so 961 segment units, uh, units to that market segment, uh, 413 market share. So we can be comfortable saying that we can do that again, uh, so long as our budget is at least these amounts and our list price is very close to this. It will be very close to this. Uh, this is saying that, however, they're estimating less sales. <coughs> so let's go ahead and see what happens here with our benchmark prediction. Now again, it does say it is useless for forecasting. So keep in mind this is standardized. It is a guess. Um, and it is all based on pure numbers. So don't count on this it's necessarily giving you trend kind of data. But let's change this to 2050 and click recalculate. Now I'm going to clear all this stuff out so don't feel like this is going to stay in here. Um, you could always pick a higher number. You could try and say, sell it for 29. It doesn't matter. Um, but let's say we sold it for 28.50. You can see now it's gone down, and it says we're going to sell less uh, products through its prediction at 28.50. But let's say that we believe we can sell 961 because we were able to do that last time. Don't be afraid to go into somebody else's screen and look. Let, let's say marketing feels like they they want to say that if we were able to sell 961 units last time, they think that with a small bump in a promo budget, or maybe even a little bit more of a bump, right? that they can feel comfortable selling a thousand units, okay? And let's go ahead and click recalculate on that. Alright, now now you see it's saying benchmark production, uh, prediction and that's because we increased the, the accessibility and awareness, right? So one thing you want to make sure though is if you're going to say you think you're going to be able to sell a thousand of these sensors. Make sure your production people can actually do that.